From Evoke Media, I'm Sabrina Mirage Naim. With me is Cassia Binkowski, and this is Breaking Glass, a series of conversations with women around the world who are shattering glass ceilings and challenging social norms. They are audacious, gutsy, and their stories are echoed across borders and generations in a rallying cry that is changing the narrative for women everywhere. Today, we're joined by Darcy Gector, the first woman to kayak the Amazon River from source to sea. Darcy has been whitewater kayaking for 21 years, and for the past 15, she's been considered one of the world's best female kayakers and one of the most accomplished expedition kayakers. She's won whitewater kayaking races throughout the world, has participated and led kayaking expeditions in 18 different countries. Sabrina, this conversation with Darcy is a great example of women who don't necessarily set out to be activists or role models, but end up having a tremendous impact on the gender dynamics within their given industry. We're talking today about Darcy's experience as a woman in extreme sports, the gender stereotypes she's been subjected to, and the glass ceilings that she's shattered along the way. Right. And something we heard from Darcy that is becoming a theme across multiple guests is her sheer stubbornness. She was told she couldn't do it because she's a woman, because she's short and petite and shy, and she's proved everyone wrong. Anytime someone told her it couldn't be done, she persevered. And that's exactly what we need more girls and women to do in order to change the gender dynamics in numerous industries, including outdoor sports. Take a listen. Darcy, thank you so much for joining us from uh, Basalt, Colorado today. We're really excited to talk to you about extreme sports, athleticism, some of your adventures, and how gender plays a part in all of that. So thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. On this show, we're, we're constantly speaking with women who are shattering glass ceilings in different ways in their respective industries, from music and entertainment to health care and conservation. And your story is no different. You are doing that in your industry, which is slightly more niche, which is professional outdoor sports. In 2013, at the age of 35, you were the first woman to complete a descent of the Amazon River from source to sea, a 4,300-mile journey, which is crazy, and I'm so excited to dig into that and, and learn more. But before we dive into that feat, take us back a little bit. You grew up in Aspen, and we want to understand where was the interest in kayaking, where did it first take place for you? Who exposed you to it? So yeah, my kayaking career started, I mean, not later in life. I was 19 years old, but I didn't start as a young child. And I ended up getting a job at a rafting company during my summer break between high school and college. And I actually wasn't that interested in kayaking, but all the other people that worked at the company, they were, you know, 22 to 25 year olds and they all went kayaking after work. So I just thought if I want to hang out with them, I've got to start kayaking. And I actually really hated the sport when I first started because I was really bad at it. And it was the first time in my life that I remembered being bad at something. And so I found it incredibly frustrating, but I guess um, some part of me also wanted to face that challenge. Like, okay, I've got to uh, get good at this sport. I can't let kayaking beat me kind of thing. Yeah, I, th- I think it's ironic that you say that you you started out hating it given what you've accomplished since then. But I also want to note that I think that it speaks to your character that instead of giving up and shying away from it, you were faced with a challenge and then took it on head on and now are one of the more celebrated kayakers in the world. Yeah, I think um, my mom would say that it's just pure stubbornness and You know, basically any time in my life when people told me that I couldn't do something, I just got absolutely determined to do it. And kayaking felt kind of the same way. You know, it was so difficult and so frustrating. But I thought, no, I can't let this be my ending with kayaking. I've got to keep at it. And it took me quite a few years to actually like finally get to the point where I felt like I was progressing and I was good at it. But it was really an amazing, great feeling when that turning point happened. When did it evolve from something you were doing after work, you know, with your colleagues in the summer 
to something you were passionate about and going to potentially seek a career in? That happened. I was going to Montana State University at the time, and I met a guy who was like, let's skip fall semester and go kayaking in Nepal. Which your parents loved. Um, They were surprisingly okay with. I thought there's no way they're ever going to say okay to this, but my mom You know, she had always been like a strict authority figure in my life. And I was really scared to ask her. And she was like, oh, that sounds like a really cool opportunity. And I was like, what? I was like, who are you? (laughs) Uh, Moms everywhere. Listen up, please. (laughs) That was incredible. Yeah. So they gave me their blessing to go. So I'd only been hiking a year. I still wasn't very good at it. And the trip was extremely difficult. Um, I swam out of my kayak a lot because I wasn't good enough to do a combat role, which is when you write your kayak back up if you've accidentally tipped over. And um, I got sick a lot from drinking dirty water and just eating bad food. But it was the first time, it was the first time I had ever left North America. And it was my first real exposure to other countries, other cultures. And I just found the whole experience uh, completely life-changing. And, you know, we got to see people and villages and ways of life that even most tourists didn't get to see because we were in these remote rivers. You know, one, we hiked for a week to get into the river and then kayaked out for a week. And it was just such a different way of seeing the world and exploring that I, that's when it clicked for me that I want to do this as much as possible. Wow. That sounds incredible. Yeah. I mean, and like transformative for you and in, in your life and your career. There has long been a gender gap, a glass ceiling for women in the outdoor industry. Um, and there are many studies that trace this back all the way to preschool and the exposure little girls get. Um, you grew up in Aspen, clearly a very outdoor oriented community. What has been your experience of that? Did this ever feel like something that it was it was something the guys were doing. It was something, you know, men were going to pursue as a professional opportunity. Did you ever have that sort of gendered experience? I definitely did. I mean, even in the rafting company, I was one of three women out of maybe 35 guides, I think, when I first started there. And uh, same in the kayaking industry. I, like both, I guess in the whole whitewater industry, it's getting better and more women are participating. But For the first 15 years of my kayaking career, it would be really weird if there was another woman on the water with me. You know, it's normally me and a whole bunch of guys. And I had some really good experiences and some guys were very encouraging and and wanted to help, you know, help me achieve my goals. But other guys, and this still happens to me all the time, you know, you'll get to a put in of a hard river and some guys will start talking and say, are you sure you have enough experience for this? And you know, now I have the confidence to say, like, whatever, I've been running the hardest rivers around the world for 20 years. And even still today, it still gets to me. I shouldn't pretend like I'm totally over it. But it really does something to your mind. And especially when you're about to put on a class five river, which is the hardest runnable classification of whitewater, you don't want doubts in your head. Like, you need to be just as mentally strong as you are physically strong because a mistake could have dire consequences, even potentially be fatal. So you don't want to be starting some hard river wondering, hmm, am I good enough for this? These guys don't think I'm good enough. How is this going to affect my performance? And so overcoming my own uh, mental state when other people put doubt in my head has been probably my biggest challenge. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's something that is worth highlighting again, which is what you're saying is that even though you are one of the most accomplished kayakers in the world and you have um, you have experienced some of the most treacherous rivers around the world and you have accomplished things that people can only dream of, that even, you know, with the best of intentions of some of these men who are asking, are you sure? Are you sure you got it? Are you sure? They're trying to maybe protect you or make sure that you are going to be okay. But really what it's doing is undercutting your confidence and also undercutting, frankly, the experience that you have spent 20 some odd years developing, which in many cases is much more than than I'm sure some of the guys that you're kayaking alongside. So being able to clear your mind of any of those doubts, whether they come from external sources or internal sources, you're doing something that is very physically, you know, perilous and risky at times. Having those doubts is just not an option. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, like I said, it's been the hardest thing to overcome is how do I, you know, fall back and fall back on my experience basically is what I try to do. You know? 